Well, good morning, everybody. It's always a joy to come here. I'm not going to preach a long sermon, but I do have some thoughts. Um, it's Black History Month, and this is a great, great time to celebrate us. And I made a post on social media this morning simply saying, we see you. And um, completely off script, I just want to say I appreciate all of you. And I appreciate what the city of Mississauga is doing right now. Uh, just a show of hands, just out of curiosity, how many of you attended the Black History Month event at, uh, at the Great Hall of Mississauga on Friday night? Yes, a few hands. Okay. All right, so we need to work on that. We need to work on that. It was very well attended, but it's we want to, one of those things we want to get more people out. So the city of Mississauga is turning 50 this year. This is, we're celebrating 50 years, and I'm turning 49. So I, I look at it this way, like there's certain things as you reach certain ages that you look back and you, you celebrate accomplishments, and then you also look forward and realize that you know there's a lot more things that you can do. And uh, there's a, a quote by Martin Luther King that says, we've come a long, long way, and we have a long, long way to go. And I feel like that is the story of Mississauga and, uh, and the story of Canada in general. And I brought this book up with me today, and we were talking about this when I was in the back. This is Lincoln Alexander, all right? The Honorable Lincoln Alexander, one of the first uh, black um, lieutenant governor. And uh, there's a new statue of him that is at Queens Park. So this, just in February, they did that, commemorating it. So they, they built the statue and it's up there. It's the first time you have a statue of a black person in Queens Park. So that is something that we deserve a round of applause. Now, what also deserves a round of applause are the people that made that happen. So we have the Black Opportunity Fund, Craig Wellington, we have Quinton Versetti, the gentleman who actually made the statue. And these are what I consider our modern day leaders, our, our emerging leaders, our pastor, uh, Bishop Walker, you know, like this uh, First Lady Walker, the people that are in our midst right now, they're doing great work. We're so quick to celebrate those past leaders, but we're not really celebrating the leaders that are in our midst right now. So can we take a minute, just look around this congregation? Go ahead, look at the people around you. And just say, you are a leader. You are a change maker. So we have so many leaders in our midst. And, and before I go, I just want to highlight a story I might have shared last year, a Made in Mississauga story of how we lead and how we change our community. There's a gentleman by the name of Samuel Carter, and he was a slave that escaped and came to Canada. He got as far as Mississauga, but in his escape from slavery, he lost his legs, frostbite, and he had to have his legs removed. He lived in the Port Credit area, and many people saw him and respected him in the area, and he was very well loved by the community. When he was older, the city council at the time, the Toronto Township, passed a motion saying that they were going to support him for the rest of his days, give him a place to live, make sure he was financially okay so that he could live the rest of his days in, in, in comfort. The street that he lived on was Wesley Avenue, and that's still right off of Lakeshore. You can see Wesley Avenue. And at the top of the street was his home, and they started to call his home Old Sam's Lane. So people would go up Old Sam's Lane to visit Samuel up at the top of that street. And that story inspires me on so many levels because it speaks to a community that cares about themselves. If you think about that society, to know that one of your community members was an escaped slave, and yet they supported him, to see a government that looked out for him, not for their own selfish ambition. What's in it for them to support this person? Yet they did. So you have a community that's supporting someone of a different skin tone and of a different ability as well. 
and a government that supports him and a community that embraces him. And that old Sam's Lane is still an area in the city today. So I hope that we're inspired to know that we can do that today for our community members. We can stand in the gap. We can be those leaders. We can be the ones that can make a difference. And for the city of Mississauga turning 50, I always have to say that the best is yet to come. The latter days will be better than the former days. And that there are some great things that we can do and we need all of you to be a part of that. Just out of curiosity, how many of you in the audience are under the age of 30? Or identify as under the age of 30? All right. You are the change makers. You are the ones that I need to listen to as an elected official. I work for you and your voice needs to be heard. So I really encourage you to let your voice be heard to, this is a shameless plug, go on ward9.ca, understand what's happening in your city and be a part. Come out to those events, come out to those celebrations of Black History Month, come out to different events about your community and what's happening on your streets. Your voice matters or else we're just listening to the last generation. We don't get a sense of how we can grow and move. So that being said, thank you once again, Bishop Walker, First Lady Walker, for the opportunity to come on your stage and just share with my, my family, my safe house, my friends, and uh, I appreciate you. Let's enjoy the rest of our day.